I hope it's going to be a bit entertaining so early in the morning, so uh, I'll do my best. Um, the title is from Qubit to Company, and yes, there is a spelling error in Company, but that's a bit deliberate, and I hope that it will become a little bit clear yeah, in the course of what I'm, uh, what I'm saying. Um, I just want to point out, because yesterday there were also quite some questions to Carmina and to others, like uh, what, is the, what is the meaning of what it is that you're doing and how, how would you build a quantum computer and things like that. That's kind of the story that I will bring uh, today. Uh, but wait, I have to go back now to my, to my, pre, to my first slide because um, I want to point out two things here. Uh, it is called the section uh, where, where we're working is Quantum Computer Architecture Lab. Um, why is that? A section is kind of a unit in a faculty, whatever it is, a part of a department, and then you have sections. And we, we, are, we, uh, we created this new one. Uh, so Carmina and I, we started working on quantum more four or four, five years ago. Um, and uh, she, she, as she said, uh, she's an EE background, and I'm a real computer engineer, whatever that may, may mean. Yeah? Um, and we came, uh, she came to, to Delft to help me in, in trying to understand what quantum is all about and how to build such a machine. Yeah, we already had, of course, Alexander uh, giving the story about D-Wave, yeah, but then, of course, he expands it to, let's say, the quantum physics behind. Yeah, I'm going to focus really only on, on the computer engineering part. So we decided to, to call the section quantum, ar quantum computer architecture, because I don't think that there is any yeah, section or group in the world, yeah, unfortunately, uh, that is actually focusing on these kinds of topics. And, uh, and why do I have Intel on the first slide? Is because Intel, yeah, just like uh, uh, IBM, Google, Microsoft, Alibaba in China, yeah, and, and uh, Rigetti, uh, and there are other, other companies, uh, D-Wave, of course, yeah, um, uh, there are other companies kind of popping up or focusing on these things. And Intel at some point said, like, okay, uh, they do a revision of the, their technical roadmap. And so five years ago, the CEO, who had to resign last week, yeah, for whatever reason, yeah. Um, so uh, he said, like, we should maybe investigate whether quantum is now a, a mature enough technology for us to start looking at it. And so Jim Clark, um, he's a guy working at Oregon, yeah, which is north, uh, it's, it's north of, of California, yeah, in uh, at, at the main production site of, of Intel. He was he was asked to go around the world. Yeah, to, to visit different kinds of research centers doing quantum computing or quantum internet and these kinds of things. So, so he went to Stanford, MIT, yeah, Princeton, yeah, all the Ivy League kind of things that we all know. Yeah, oh, wow, yeah, hallelujah, if you go there, that's incredible. Yeah, uh, he went to, 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 to Australia where there are, there's a big community of quantum computing. Uh, and he also, uh, at some point, came to, came to Delft. And, uh, um, yeah. Uh, I, was, I was still kind of a newbie, yeah? I, I have to admit that, because this is like four, and eight, four years and a half ago. Uh, so what do I know about quantum computing, quantum architecture? Yeah? Um, and so I said, I, I can pretend as much as the physicists do, right? Say, so, yeah, whatever, you know, we have so many qubits. Huh? Oh. Oh, okay, I thought I, I was pushing the wrong button here. Um, uh, and, uh, and so uh, Jim Clark, um, after the visit, uh, three, four weeks, three, uh, three, four weeks after that, we got an email that said, actually, uh, Delft is the only place in the world where we heard a coherent story about building a computer and not doing quantum physics. And I was like, okay, wow. And that's actually the contribution of our faculty because QTech that I, that I mentioned here, yeah, QTech is a research center that was created yeah, actually by Leo Kaunho, he's a quantum physicist on Majoranas, don't worry about these things, yeah? And, and he said, we need actually the engineers to, to look at the, the problems because we, we do advance, but we hit the wall. We said, mm, we cannot, we, because scaling is, is one of those big problems, yeah? You need a lot of qubits, yeah? Uh, we heard already that several thousands that D-Wave has, yeah? Well, uh, everybody is, is absolutely amazed and, and admiring the D-Wave uh, technology, and that is really so, because I've been already in a lot of quantum computing meetings. But we also do know that, yes, we, we're not there. Yeah? Quantum computing is not there where D-Wave should be. Yes, we're all on the, on the right path, so that is, that is very, very good. But uh, uh, so Jim Clark said, yeah, Delft is the only place we're going to invest only in one place in the world, and that's going to be Delft. And so that's basically the roadmap, the fault tolerant quantum computing roadmap, yeah, which is also on the on the slide, yeah, where where our team, 
together with physicists, are jointly working on building experimental technology for, for quantum computing. So that is, that's why all these names are on the first slide. So I'm already using the first 10 minutes just to explain the first slide. Yeah? I'll go a bit faster on, on many others. But that is, that, is, that is the key, and I think that's, that's very important that indeed a company like Intel yeah, is engaged very concretely and with serious uh, uh, financial means into this, uh, into this research. And why is that important? Because yeah, yesterday we heard also about superconducting, semiconducting. Yeah, these are two key technologies. Yeah, there are five. I will, I, will, I will show them all five at some point. But, but uh, uh, Intel is really one of the world leaders, if not the most proficient yeah, manufacturer of, of Intel, of, of, uh, well, of course, Intel, of uh, processor technology. Yeah? So it's very important that we get support from them. And we work with teams in Oregon, because like a month ago, uh, Carmina Nader, yeah, uh, the Tunisian guy, uh, we, we went to Oregon and then we went to, to ISCA, I will also say something about that, yeah, to, to again communicate and interact with the entire team at Intel, and, uh, and on, uh, well, a good or a bad thing, uh, but they hired a Nader, for instance, now. Yeah? They took him from our team and he's going to start in December working for, for Intel on quantum computing. Yeah? So again, I think that's enough as an introduction, right? Uh, but I do want to want to highlight to certain kinds of uh, pieces of news that actually got got launched yesterday. Really, I, I was I was in the morning before I was I was uh, taking my plane to to Porto. Yeah, I suddenly got a Wired uh, email because I, I subscribed to Wired. It's a blah. It's a blah. yeah. And uh, and uh, they they gave this this particular title. Yeah. Finally, a problem only quantum computers will ever be able to solve. And that's yesterday. So this is, uh, this is a really very recent, recent finding, yeah, a, a theoretical finding, because yes, we are not there. So I want to be very clear, just like uh, Alex, uh, Alexander said yesterday, we are not there. We're, we're, I think we are getting, we're creating enough momentum so that we do go in the, we hope that we go in the right direction. But there is indeed this, this, this key problem. How do you say now what, what a quantum computer will really be able to do? Yeah? Now, I'm just giving you the, the, the title. Yeah, and uh, and it's 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 up to you to maybe look at it. Um, uh, I do have another slide that says, yeah, what kind of the problem is? It's correlation. Yeah, it's like kind of a correlation, but then based on Fourier transforms. Yeah, whatever it is, it's about determining whether two random number generators are are kind of related to each other or not. Yeah, so. Read, read the article, because, and, and also the paper that these people uh, produced, yeah, uh, because that, that's, that's indeed one of those key issues yeah, that we're still struggling with. Yeah? And I will give other examples uh, uh, at some point. This is um, ISCA, yeah, uh, uh, International Symposium Computer Architectures, that was in, held in Los Angeles like a month ago. Uh, so after we went, Nader, Carmina, and me, we went to Oregon, we went to ISCA to give a tutorial on quantum computing, exactly the one that she gave yesterday. So just to know that, yeah, no, but it's important that you understand that it's not like, yeah, yeah, we, 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 we have 10 slides and boom, here, and, and we bore you for, for, for two, three hours. No, we really thought about these things. She's very good in explaining, I think, and I hope that you experienced that also yesterday. Yeah, um, so we did, we did the, the same thing in, uh, in, in, at ISCA. And um, at ISCA, um, well, that's California, Los Angeles, California. And uh, for those who are a little bit in computer science, computer engineering, these kinds of things, maybe you, don't, you do know about Hennessy and Patterson. Yeah, I want to see some heads like, yeah, yeah, we know those guys, yeah? Because they wrote two Bibles in computer engineering, yeah? that we use in the bachelor program and in the master program of, of electrical engineering and then computer engineering. And those, those two people um, uh, were invited to give a Turing lecture at the, at the conference, which is a big honor. And, uh, and why, am I, why am I going to show you two little sh uh, uh, short uh, pieces of, 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 uh, of the talk? Yeah, is because it actually, and, and Carmina, uh, maybe she will deny it, but I was actually saying like, Wow, this guy really understands that, that he did not mention quantum a single time. Yeah, so it's quantum is like no, 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 no. Yeah, he's mainstream technology person. Yeah, and and uh, Hennessy and Patterson. Yeah, but the fact that the that the, what 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 their message was. Yeah, I'm not going to say it now because otherwise I'm I'm spoiling uh, the talk. So there's the first talk by by Hennessy. Oh. 
uh, it used to work. Oh, wait, uh, maybe. Okay, wait, I have to go back now. We tested it beforehand and it worked, yeah? And now for certain, for some reason, yeah, it's not working anymore. Yeah, no, I tried it, you see? Ah, okay. Wait, I'm going to start again because the very first sentence is actually an important sentence that he, that he has because that's also a kind of discussion that I try to launch now in our quantum computing uh, 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 community. Oh. Oh, yeah. Hold on. Okay. Okay, now, that, that, that's the first thing. That, that, that also shows that the, the multidimensional kind of approach, if you want to build, let's say, an application-specific accelerator, which is our current vision of, of quantum computing. We don't want to build the universal, yeah, we want to build as universal as possible, but it's basically an accelerator kind of technology. And I will, I will say more about that, but let's first uh, uh, listen again.
For many, it's a return to the past. It's a return to a time when computer companies were vertically integrated rather than horizontally using code. And I think that provides an exciting opportunity for people both in academic computer science as well as in the Okay, so, so the, the, the message that it brings is that if you want to work on, let's say, quantum computing, quantum accelerator, yeah, you have to look at the application level, programming languages in compilers, runtime support if needed, an architectural uh, support, chip design, yeah, and then bringing everything together. And this is exactly what actually we started doing in Delft prior to whatever Hennessy and Patterson, their opinion is, yeah, but post factum hearing that, they said like, okay, wow, this is a big reassurance that we are indeed doing the right things in the right direction. Uh, and I've been working on FPGAs before that. Yeah, maybe you don't know what FPGAs are, yeah, but I did exactly the same from an application design, yeah, to program language in a compiler, an architecture, and chip design. That's what I did, and now I simply did it in the same, so I don't have anything you know, innovative to do, because I always keep on doing the same kind of thing, maybe. Yeah? The, but there's a concrete link with our work, and I will, I will uh, re-emphasize that also at some point. So now I'm going to recap some of the concepts that Carmina was, uh, was explaining yesterday, yeah? is that you can have zeros and ones, yeah? and do everything in a zero in a one state, but you can also do that in a superposition state, as, uh, as we explained. Yeah, and then you have, let's say, always the, the tie here. The red pointer here, I don't know whether you see it, yeah? Okay, so you have a psi, yeah? And that can be decomposed in a particular base, base system, zero and one, within these alphas. And the alphas are these amplitudes. And whatever quantum algorithm at some point you might, you might want to develop, you're only going to manipulate those, those amplitudes. That is the core of what, what quantum computing is all about. It is manipulating, making them bigger or smaller. And in the end, you have, let's say, a superposition state, and then you will measure out, and then you have to do that multiple times because it's non-deterministic. I will, I will again, uh, highlight that later. Yeah? And so sometimes you will, you, will, you will measure, in most of the cases, you will measure the one with the biggest amplitude. But in some cases, because it's a random yeah, collapse of my of my superposition state to any of the base states. Yeah, you may end up also with the wrong with the wrong result. So that is that is a, a key factor really to understand. Yeah, in in, in quantum. Yesterday also the, the the question came up. What is now really the power of quantum computing? Come on, I haven't seen anything here. Yeah, because we we give you the basics. Yeah, and we don't really go like the extrapolation. Yeah, what the the physicists have been doing. Yeah. Uh, and now we start doing that also uh, a little bit. So but let, let's give you, uh, a, again, an example. In classical bits, so the classical zeros and the ones, they're either zero or either one. Yeah? Then you can, you can combine multiple of those states, yeah? of those bits. Uh, let's say three bits, so you get eight different states in total yeah? that you see here on the left side. And then if you want to process in, do whatever it is with each of those states. It's a sequential kind of uh, process. You take the first one, yeah, and then use the second, and until you have the eight. Yeah. If you do that, if you do that quantumly, yeah, well, yeah, you again say you, you can you can combine three qubits in the, exactly the same way as uh, as you you combine classical bits, and so you also have eight uh, superposition states with then eight amplitudes, yeah, the eight alphas here that we see with the... With the oh, uh, uh, you see that here with the, with the, the indices 0, 0, 0, up to 1, 1, 1, yeah, for representing all these individual superposition states. And then if you apply any kind of quantum gate on it, you're going to apply them each time on all of those state, eight states at the same time. And this is really, this is something that, that as a computer engineer, so like, when I first understand, understood that, I said like, wow, quantum mechanics is giving us massive parallelism for free. The for free is not true, yeah? But that, that's like, wow, this is, this is, this is incredible. And so when you, when you build classical systems, yeah, even in an, FP, an FPGA or a GPU or a DSP or whatever it is, it's always serial. Yeah, it's a purely sequential way of processing. Yes, there's parallel architectures. Yes, 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 that is true. But having one operation that you want to do on, on an entire superposition set of qubits and do it in one, in one set, yeah, in one step, it's like, 
wow, this is, this is amazing. Yeah? So that, that I think is, is important to, 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 to remember again. Yeah? And the fact of n, namely I have here three qubits, so two to the power three, if I, if I have yeah, two to the power, let's say that we manage to make 200 good qubits, but really good ones, right? Not the ones that everybody claims to have, and trust me, no one has them, yeah? Uh, uh, and I'm not saying anything indiscreet here for D-Wave, yeah? because that, the same holds for IBM, the same holds for Intel, blah, blah, blah. So, oh, I have 72, we have 50, 50, 49. Yeah, yeah, how many can you really use? Three, four, five? B really use means in a reliable, predictable way, and in a repeatable way. I say, I do this microwave on this superposition and I always get that kind of result. I want to do that maybe a hundred times because the readout stays non-deterministic and, and random, yeah? But you don't want the operations to go there and then the other time there. That, that's not what you want. You want it always to do in a predictable way, yeah? So that, so, but if I have, let's say, 200 good qubits, two to the power 200 is a number that People say this, this actually yeah, uh, is bigger than the number of estimated atoms in the known universe. Wow. Yeah, the number of atoms on Earth is like already hugely, hugely big. Yeah, and now we, we, we're going to say in the entire universe that we know. So it's simply to say that, that quantum computing has the potential, and I, only keep on re I have to keep on repeating, it is a potential, we are not there yet, but has the potential to solve problems that we cannot even imagine how big and complex they are. Yeah? So that, I think, is, is, uh, is, uh, is, uh, is very important. Again, Carmina uh, talked about yesterday about universal gate sets. Yeah? Luckily, there are a couple of people, and now I'm talking about yeah, the first years after Richard Feynman, because uh, yeah, Richard Feynman is maybe, yeah, you do know him, right? Because he's an absolute, he, he's, he, was, he was a real genius in physics. Yeah, and, uh, and he was actually, he gave in 82 or 86, somewhere in the 80s, yeah, he gave a talk that he said, if you really want to understand quantum yeah, uh, phenomena, like superposition and all this thing, we should need a computer based on those things such that we can actually really un understand how these mechanisms uh, actually work. Yeah? And that, is that, that, that gave birth to the quantum computing domain. So I'm talking about the uh, beginning of the 80s. So that's what, like 30 years ago, 30, 40 years ago? So, so that, 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 that's, that's a, a brilliant talk. Yeah? And look at, you can, you can find also a lot of guest lectures on YouTube. Yeah, uh, sorry to say something about YouTube, eh? but, but look at him and he, it's really amazing. Yeah? Anyway, so the, the universal gate sets, so some theoreticians, they, they immediately started thinking about, yeah, but how to do an operation and these kind of things. So, so this is just one example, the, a, the, the Hadamard, the T, the C0, and the S gate is one universal gate set. Yeah? And Carmina kind of already explained how these things uh, uh, can, can execute and, and, and do, do, do things, right? Um, uh, there are cer certain properties, the unitary operation, and also the reversibility. The reversibility is something, as a computer engineer, you say, well, no, no, it cannot be, right? Because uh, we do know that, that heating is a, is a huge problem. It's a huge problem in, in a computer, you know? All of the data centers, where do you think Google builds in the latest data centers? They go close to the, the Arctic Circle, you know? They're really in super cold areas, such that the air conditioning yeah, expenses gone, can be sub substantially lower because it's already cold by itself there. Yeah? So that simply means that, that this reversibility yeah, always, always uh, makes, ma or makes us lose data yeah, um, in, in, in whatever operation it is that we're doing. Because, yes, classical operations are not reversible. Yeah? That is, that is that's what it is. So that, that's a very important property of, uh, of, uh, of uh, a quantum machine. Uh, Can we interrupt uh, a little bit? We have been having technical problems, oh yeah, so oh we're yeah, going to okay. rewire you. Sorry, sorry. So sorry, but we'll be quite quick. Okay. Keep blah blah right? Keep Yep. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. It's already on. Yeah. Okay. Very good. Much better. Okay. All right. 
Yeah, thank you. No, no. Thank you so much. Okay. Uh, maybe it's a bit too loud now, or is it okay? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so here you see uh, another another visualization of this compute power, yeah, where where we we simply said, okay, this is the number of qubits that you can have uh, in a in a meaningful way, like in a predictable, verifiable way, yeah. Uh, and we are not there. I, I have to keep on repeating myself, right? Uh, and then you see indeed that it's kind of an exponential increase. Yeah? Um, it, it, it's a manually uh, drawn uh, graph here, so maybe the exponential curve would be a bit more aggressive. Yeah? But, um, and these are just, uh, I don't know, there's something that my, my keynote did, yeah? uh, taking it from PowerPoint, so don't, don't worry about these things. But you see here the number of parallel states, yeah? which is uh, uh, when I have two qubits, it's four states, three qubits, it's eight states, two to the power 10. Yeah, and then you keep on increasing, and this is the number when you have 300 uh, qubits. Yeah, it's this, it's this number, and I couldn't even pronounce that number. Yeah, and that's the one that also has like a bigger, it's a bigger state than, the, than these, these atoms in the, in the known universe, 200 or 300. Yeah, um, uh, but what is important to understand also when you build such a, such a quantum computer is that each time yeah, I add one qubit, I basically double the entire capacity of the machine, double it which is not something that classically we can do. Yeah, you add another processor and a bit more memory. It's kind of, at the best, it's kind of a linear curve. But we also know that it's not a linear curve because it's kind of a downward shift uh, curve. That's, that's what we know from supercomputers and, and everything. But if you build a quantum computer, in theory at least, you add another qubit, you basically add yeah, 2 to the power n, becomes 2 to the power n plus 1. So you double. Yeah, the capacity of your machine. And that's why the race for how many qubits do you have, that's why you hear Google saying 72 and IBM and Intel up, up. Yeah, that's why, that, that because they make themselves a bit, yeah, uh, 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 I would say, desired yeah, for, for being the best in, in, the, in the field. That's why they, they, they dump these numbers from time to time. Yeah? But this is, this is simply the compute power, the evolution of compute power by adding one, one qubit to say, yeah, well, adding one bit, what does that change? No, 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 it changes everything. Yeah? So, so the, the size of the problems that you can, that you can start manipulating yeah, really becomes uh, incredibly, incredibly big. The non-deterministic, because I'm, I'm, I'm answering a couple of the questions that I, that I heard yesterday, that in the context of whatever uh, Carmina was, was, was explaining, yeah, she had no time yeah, to really go into those things. So, so again, uh, the non-deterministic uh, computing again, I already kind of explained that, yeah, that we have this superposition, 2 to the power n, whatever it is. So these are all superposition states on which I can apply then all of the quantum gates. So on all of those 2 to the n power in one step at the same time. And then afterwards, when you want to read out the results, you have to do this measurement. Yeah, and uh, I'm, 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 I'm giving you again a, a tip for, for those who are really interested in, in saying, oh, I want to really go one step further in quantum computing, look at the MOOC, it's a massive online course, yeah, by Vazirani. And Vazirani is a professor at Berkeley, and he made already years ago, a, in my eyes, a brilliant MOOC, yeah, a brilliant online, it's on edX. Yeah? So if you Google Vazirani with a V yeah, um, and with a Z, yeah, uh, uh, quantum computing, you will, find, you will find this course. It is brilliant, absolutely brilliant, and goes into, deep, de into very deep details. Yeah? And also, he's very honest as a physicist, yeah, or a computer scientist is kind of a, a mixture of, 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 those, of those competences. He's also very honest in saying what physicists can, or quantum physics can or cannot really explain. And trust me, superposition and entanglements we know how to induce them, we know how to use them, but what it really is, nobody knows. Yeah, really, nobody knows. And, and uh, so you can, you can talk to any physicist, and if they're honest, they will say, yeah, we don't know, yeah? You have a lot of people that, 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 all, that make big claims, yeah, that they, yes, no, no, we know, yeah? Trust me, go through Vazirani's lecture and you will understand. So what, why, why, am I, why am I mentioning Vazirani? Because he also talks about measurement. Yeah? We have all these superpositions. Why can't we read out all of those states? Why? Yeah? Again, he's very honest. Said, we don't know. Because maybe we have like a big truck yeah? and we want to look at a tiny little, little insect, you know? Yeah? And the, the, the big truck is like... Whoosh, 
rolling over the insect that, 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 that you try to study. That's kind of an image that he, that he uses. He uses a different image, yeah, but that's how I translate it now. Yeah, so that the, the measurement instrumentation that we do is ridiculously complex and big compared to the phenomena that we're actually looking at. Yeah? And th those things, yeah, th th it's very important to, to, be, to be aware of all of these challenges yeah, because that's what we jointly, uh, as a team, yeah, the, the physicists and the computer engineers, that we look at together and try to see how do we go, how do we go there. Now, so that is, that is why, why the result yeah, is, is the measuring, and we don't know what, what we're going to measure. And then, yes, it's with the one with the biggest amplitude, and because it is non-deterministic, that's why I have to do maybe 10 runs or 100 runs of the same algorithm and do 10, 10 measurements or 100 measurements. Yeah? We don't really know how many times we need to do it. Is it two, is two enough? Is three enough to get down a majority voting? Mm, we don't know. Yeah? So you have to do it enough times and then make some kind of histogram of what is now predicted as, as the correct answer of your algorithm. And the one with the biggest amplitude normally will be read most of the times, so you can be quite sure that that's going to be the correct answer. Yeah? I, will, I will show a picture uh, uh, later on uh, also about that. Okay, so I already said this, so, that's, uh, so, so the quantum mechanics, as I already said, yeah, the fact that you can do it all of, on all of these superposition states at the same time, that's, the, that's what we get the, the massive parallelism for free. Yeah? And the for free is not really true, and that's also a big part of, uh, of what I will be talking about. Yeah? This I said uh, I had to say for the number of, uh, of, uh, of superpositions bigger than the universe, yeah? the atoms. So this is another visualization of how quantum algorithms actually work. Yeah? Because I had yesterday from Ariel said, yeah, but how, how, do, how do you start doing that? And I have to be honest, like, actually, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not, a, I'm not a computer scientist uh, yeah, with a quantum background. Yeah, I, I, I really don't know. Yeah? So I, I can only repeat examples that others, that others have formulated. And this is one such an example. So uh, Grover's algorithm, yes, yeah, 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 whatever it is, for factorization. Yeah? Uh, so it's, it is, um, remember that a lot of the, the, the crypto uh, uh, systems are based on the simple fact that you can use a big number to encode all of your messages, and you can only decrypt it if you know what the, what the factors are that when multiplied together, they give you the big number. Yeah? So the factorization in, in, in prime numbers is really a key problem. And Grover yeah, has, uh, shows that in less number of steps than classical algorithms, you get those, those prime numbers. Now, that's not that important yeah, uh, right now. But what is it that, that Grover and any kind of quantum algorithm does is manipulating these, these, uh, these uh, uh, amplitudes. And again here, I have three qubits. Yeah? And they all start with the same amplitude. So from 0, 0 to 1, 1, 1, you see all of these are the same, the same line. That's kind of the initialization. What Carmina said, yeah, we initialize everything in the zero state. Yeah, sure, wh whatever. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, it is a choice that we made, and that, that, that's good. Yeah? And then you start, you start manipulating those, uh, those, uh, uh, those amplitudes. Yeah? So all of the states, and you do a certain number of operations. And then you will see that maybe one of those amplitudes, they will change in sign, for instance. That's the second part here, where this one yeah, is becoming a negative amplitude, and the other ones, yeah, they're kind of the same, but they, they, uh, they stay positive. And then the goal of, of any quantum algorithm is that you keep on manipulating and, and uh, making these amplitudes differences bigger and bigger. So that you, you will see here that this amplitude for 110 yeah, becomes bigger, yeah, goes from negative to positive, negative, positive. And at some point you can say, okay, now I, I will stop the algorithm yeah, and I'm going to measure it out. Yeah? And so this has clearly the biggest amplitude. So the probability, if I measure it 10 times, maybe at least 5 plus 1, 6 times, I will read that particular solution. And in other times, because it's a random behavior, yeah, I will get the wrong results. So that's why you have this kind of histogram when you measure out your, your, your quantum algorithm that you will, if you, if you do it frequently enough and correctly enough, you will get, you will get the correct result. Yeah? So that is what, uh, what, uh, what actually this particular uh, mechanism yeah, uh, in, in Grover's algorithm does, but that's, that's the core of any kind of quantum algorithm. Okay? And that is, that is why it is not so easy, because remember the gates that, uh, that uh, Carmina uh, showed yesterday, 
Well, uh, yeah, it's not easy to, to really understand what the, what the impact is of a particular operation. Yeah? So that, is, that, that takes, that takes uh, learning by itself. Why is it now uh, the, the, the difference again between, between quantum and classical? This is a classical machine where, I hand, again, I have my eight states, and then I serially read them in. Is this something? No. Yeah, I read it in the second one yeah, until I find the, the correct result. Yeah, and that's what, uh, that's what you do. So again, it's a sequential, a serial execution of, of, your, of your qubit states. Yeah? If I have a quantum machine, again, I have uh, three qubits that are, that are uh, combined with each other yeah, in a superposition state. So again, I have eight, eight different states, and I already made the 110 here. Uh, I, I, I put it on in bold. And then I put them into the quantum machine, and because I do all of the, the, the logic on all of those states at the same time, yeah, I immediately get kind of the result. So it's not a serial execution, it is a parallel execution yeah, on all of those states. Yeah? That, is, that is important to, to understand. What are the quantum applications that, uh, that we might be interested in? I already mentioned crypto. Yeah? Uh, and that's, that's really something that, uh, so you, we all know maybe DARPA, the Defense Agency Research Program yeah, of America. Yeah? Well, no, they're not, in, they're not into quantum computing. What community is into quantum computing? It are the, the, the intelligence agencies, the ERPA. These are the ones that really put a lot of money into, into quantum computing. We work a lot with Leo Di Carlo. Yeah, sounds Italian, but he's Argentinian from Stanford, up at up, all the Ivy League, and he works in Delft now, yeah, and he works on superconducting. He has a very big ERPA kind of uh, project. Yeah, and, and of course, he's all in, into the fault tolerant with Intel. So that's why we, we do have some money to share with each other and to, to, to create our own community. Yeah, so, but that, that's what IARPA is actually doing. Now, uh, is, is cryptography the key, the key uh, let's say, game changer in, in, the, in the quantum world? Yeah, I think, Alexander, that we agree. No, this is this most likely not true. Yeah, for various reasons, and maybe the most important one is that a quantum computer will be, yeah, is a bigger, is a, is, a, is a quantum Turing machine. So in principle, whatever classically can be done, yes, we can do that also in quantum. Is it always going to be faster? We don't know, and in most cases, actually, most likely not. Yeah? That's why the, the application-specific kind of message that I started with of, of Hennessy and Patterson is so important. Yeah, but anyway, so the the, the ERPA, so the, the, the crypto uh, community has already launched a completely new theme, the post quantum cryptography, because they're they're smarter, you know. They said, yeah, well, if we keep on doing it RSA, and then yeah, well, they can break us in any in any in any time. Yeah, and that's why the ERPA uh, and the intelligence the NSA. NSA has a D-Wave machine, yeah? Google has a D-Wave machine, yeah? Many companies have a D-Wave machine, yeah? Because they, they do hope something, to do something useful with it, and we don't know what it is, because these are secret programs, right? But, but uh, the IARPA, yeah, is something that, the, or the intelligent uh, community, the crypto community already knows that, there, that we need to develop techniques that nobody in the quantum world has looked at. So if, if you have Grover, forget it. We, we will be, we will be, we will be uh, broken, yeah? So they have to do something completely different, and that is, uh, that is a, a nice challenge. Um, what, are, what are other uh, kinds of, uh, of uh, solutions uh, or, or application domains? Well, you see here molecule simulation, yeah? DNA sequence. I will say something tonight, yeah, and I hope you, you I'm not going to be boring everybody at, uh, at, at 6.30, yeah, but I will say something about, about a project that we only nine months ago we started, and it's called uh, quantum genome sequencing. I will say something about that, but, but maybe there is, there is something, and I will explain that later, but uh, molecule simulation, chemistry, is a really big domain. Yeah, because multi-atoms, yeah, multi-body yeah, problems are, are very complicated, and we cannot, we cannot do that in a, in a classical way, in an efficient way, in a scalable way. So whatever, whatever uh, a pharmacological uh, company is doing, everything is done on a computer these days. Yeah, you always think about chemistry or, or pharmacology, yeah, people in, in white, uh, white coats and things like that, and then pouring yeah, all kinds of things together. No, it's a computer program. Yeah? But, and, and so that is, that is where, where the, the, the trend is going. Yeah? But they always 
yeah, hit the, 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 the compute power uh, limitations of classical machines. So that's maybe something where, where the, the, the quantum world could look at. And that's also something that, uh, that quantum uh, people yeah, they actually, there's a, there's a new theme, and I think Microsoft was actually very important in that. Yes, I'm mentioning a lot of companies here. It's not to, to make publicity for them, but these people really dominate yeah, quite heavily the, 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 the research theme. Eh? So, but uh, um, uh, Dave Wecker from, uh, from uh, Microsoft, uh, he has been working on chemical uh, algorithms, quantum algorithms, where he says, I want to make an, an algorithm where I need as little as possible number of qubits, maybe 200 qubits. Logical qubits, yeah, I will say something about that. Carmina did not have time. Yeah, I will say something about that. But these things are like, okay, this, this seems like feasible, you know? This is not like millions and millions of qubits, no. Yeah, even if I have a lot of physical ones to make one logical, yeah, maybe with a couple of thousand, that would already be good. So that, that's, that's what, that is what really going on and living in, uh, in, 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 in the world, wherever the world uh, is, yeah? So that's, um, uh, that, that's, that's uh, yeah, big data yeah, and, uh, and DNA. Yeah, they're very closely connected. Yeah, I will say about that uh, tonight. But I have a colleague now in, in, in the group, well, not in, in my group now, eh, he's in, a, in, a, in, in another group. Yeah, but he, started, he starts looking at quantum artificial intelligence. Yeah, sure, everybody's doing intelligence these days, yeah? artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning. Yeah, well, we want to do it in a, from, a, from a quantum perspective. Yeah, and I thought there was one student here from Porto. I don't know where she's. Ah, oh, thank you very much. Yeah, uh, it's an open invitation to come and visit us in Delft, and maybe we can do something together. Yeah, because Zaid is clearly interested, has been diving into this for the last three, four months, and when, when Zaid uh, uh, dives into something, he goes deep, you know, he really goes deep. So uh, that, that may be a possibility where you say, oh, maybe that's something that, 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 that we could look at. Because uh, in a de he's, he's from the genome sequencing, I will say it about that uh, tonight, yeah? But that basically means how many genes do we have? Three billion, as individuals, three billion. And those are the ones that we have to process yeah, in, 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 so that's a big data problem. It's really a big data problem. So these things are, are uh, closely, closely connected. Is there already a killer app, uh, let's say, in, in the making for quantum? No. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'm, I'm very disappointing if I say too many, so I, I don't know, I, I don't know what it is, eh, Luis, but, but uh, I have to be honest. Yeah. It is, it is an emerging domain. And I try, and, or we try really, yeah, uh, but that it's ma more of a personal kind of vocation. We try to, to motivate as many possible people to go into it, you know, from your own background, say, yes, I want to look at what the quantum uh, aspects now are of whatever it is, as a language, as an application, and, 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 and everything else. So these are, these are the, the, the candidates, yeah. Yeah, you can add maybe 10 more. I don't know what, what, what they are, yeah, but, uh, but, but this is basically what, uh, what people are looking at. And I do think that chemistry and biology and medicine are maybe the first fields where we will see a lot of, a lot of uh, uh, critical mass popping up, I do hope, right? Um, again, Shor's algorithm. Um, um, this is, no, uh, actually I was, I was wrong in, in uh, saying it Grover, eh, that, that I made a mistake, so it, it's Shor's algorithm, yeah, that helps you in finding those prime numbers, yeah, and I simply give this example now as, uh, as, uh, as a way to illustrate what it is that we're actually trying to build, yeah. I already said the, the, the word accelerator multiple times because we're not building a standalone quantum computer to say, whoa, 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 I'm going to read my emails and I'm going to write the text in the PowerPoint for, for in Porto. No, no, you, you don't use a quantum computer for that. Yeah? It is for very dedicated things. So this is an example yeah, where you, you want to find uh, the, the, these prime numbers. And then you will see here in red, you call a quantum, the period finding subroutine, yeah, uh, and, and that is basically then what you would throw to the quantum device, and it will do something for I don't know how, mu how long, and will spit out the result. That, that's basically what it is. So what, what any kind of algorithm is that you, will be, that you can be developing at any point in time, it is always going to be a mixture of classical programming together with, uh, with uh, uh, the, the, the quantum logic. So that is, uh, this is simply an example of, uh, of how to do that. What is our big system view? 
yeah, well, it's not so, it's not so inspiring because I've been doing this for, for 15 years on FPGAs. I have a host CPU, yeah, and I'm going to connect the GPU to it and an FPGA to it, yeah? So the heterogeneous multi-core is really, that's why I put it as a title, yeah? We are now in the, in the, in the era where we understand that whatever quantum architecture it is, uh, uh, computer architecture, it is a heterogeneous multi-core. I have multiple computational units, DSPs, yeah, GPUs, uh, FPGAs, yeah, to get combined with classical ones that are already uh, multiple compute cores, whatever, yeah, and we can add maybe a quantum accelerator to that, and that is the, that's the system design. So if we accept that, then I say, well, psh, yeah, well, actually, we already know how to combine all these things yeah, together. Because what is, what is very important, and there are two, two terms that I, that I want to highlight again, yeah, is, so leave away the QC now, yeah, is in-memory computing. Yeah? Uh, maybe you, you don't know what in-memory computing is, and maybe you do. I do hope you do. Yeah? And if not, then I hope that you will start thinking about that. But what is, what is one of the big challenges in, let's say, supercomputers, that we have these ridiculously big data sets that we, need to, that we need to process? And you cannot process them by one processor. You need to send them maybe to a couple of thousands of processors. Yeah? Remember that the supercomputer uh, uh, competition yeah, was, is actually now being dominated by, the, by China. Because always was it US, 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 US. Yeah? And suddenly China says, like, we start working there, you know, and they, they use maybe Intel, Intel processors, but they have their own interconnects, and now they have, they built the, the, the most powerful supercomputer, yeah, yeah, using their own processor technology and interconnect, so it's a fully Chinese machine, yeah. So that simply means that, that this evolution, yeah, is so, is going really fast, yeah, uh, because we have also a lot of the, 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 the big companies like Alibaba, you know Alibaba, maybe you don't know, but it's kind of, it's kind of an Amazon in China. Yeah? And they, they've also, also been working on, on, uh, on a quantum, quantum processor, yeah? superconducting, etc. And they're, they're, they're considered to be one of the leaders in the world. Out of nothing, they're there, you know? And so that, that, goes, that goes in classical as well as in, in, the, in the quantum uh, uh, way. So whatever, whatever this heterogeneous yeah, or in-memory computing, yeah, wait, no. Uh, I, I go back to my, to my explanation, I'm sorry. Yeah? Yeah? So what, why do we need to do in-memory computing if I have this huge data set and I need to put them onto a couple of thousands of processors? That's how we build supercomputers. Can we really say that this part is only going to be processed there and then this part is going to be processed on another one? No, they're, they're so interconnected and dependencies yeah? So that we just say, dump it on the machine yeah? and let's pray that it works. Yeah? Let's pray. Because do we computer engineers know how these big machines work? No, we don't really know how it works. We know how to make them and press enter and then it starts running. Yeah, and a lot of inefficiencies and I don't know what. The, the, yeah, but we don't care because we hide them because that's how we, we make these things. Yeah, so that's, that's in memory. Now, why is quantum computing also in memory computing? Because what is, what is the essence of in memory computing is that I have a huge, huge memory. Yeah? And we've, been, we've actually in, in Delft, yeah? and that's prior to when, uh, so that's after FPGA, I, I started with, my, with another Said Hamdiwi, the other was Zaid Alars, Iraqi Mor Moroccan, yeah? just to, to show how universal that we try to be. Yeah? So with the, the site with an S, we looked at the in-memory computing using memristors. I said, yeah, whatever, you know, yeah, memristors, yeah, that's like the new transistor, if you want, yeah, is a memristor where you can actually store data, but you can also compute data with the same kind of technology. So you could really think about merging logic and, and data, yeah, in a fine-grained way, and so you, could, you, you keep your data and you apply the logic on the data, rather than taking the data and sending it to a processor and sending the result back. No, the data stays there, and you, you, you apply the logic on those data items. That's what we do in quantum. That's exactly what, what Carmina has been explaining yesterday. You have data qubits, and then you're going to apply a quantum logic, yeah, a quantum gate on each qubit. 
That's how you do it. Whether it's in superposition or entanglement, we don't care. But that's what you do. You don't want these things to be, move, to be moving around, yeah, which we do yeah, for, a, for a reason that I will explain later. But so that is, that is uh, in-memory computing. That's, that's a really a core concept also that I want people to understand. When you build a quantum machine, you're building an in-memory computing machine. Okay? Now, the, the, the second, the second uh, uh, and that, that's maybe a bit simpler, is that when I have, when I have a computational element yeah, here, FPGAs, GPUs, oh, and quantum, well, each of those things, they have their own instruction set. What is an instruction set? These are the core instructions that this, this component is capable of executing. Yeah? With a GPU, it's more like vectors and matrices. Yeah? FPGA can be a very tiny and a very long computation or maybe relatively little data, yeah, but very long. Yeah? And then you, you generate a circuit in an FPGA, and that's, that's your accelerator. Well, you do the same also in, in, with, with quantum. One of the things that we have been working on from day one is what, are now the, what is the quantum instruction set? What is the quantum instruction set architecture? Yeah. So that is the, that, that's really what, the, so what we work on is indeed uh, this, this particular kind of implementation. Okay. Just to give you an example, yeah, I will not go through all of my slides, but that's fine, right? I mean, uh, yeah, at some point I will, I will skip a, a couple of things. Yeah. Um, so, but this is an example again of, of to illustrate the compute power, the compute power. Let's assume that we want to uh, compute the prime numbers for a 2,000-bit number. Yeah? Uh, that, that's the top. Yeah? 2,048 bits yeah, number. So that, that's pretty long. And let's assume, let's assume that we can build a data center the size of the, the Germany and the Netherlands. Fully stacked with machines. Eh? So not like yeah, one here and one there, and then I put the cable. No, 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 no. Everything is one big computer, so that means 357,000 square kilometers of compute machine. Yeah? So let's assume that we can build that. Yeah? Then it would still take 100 years, a ridiculous amount of, of budget, a ridiculous amount of watts, yeah? and basically saying that we will compute everything yeah, energy uh, uh, can, can, the Earth can offer in one month, if that's the kind of machine that I need to build. So trust me. We cannot do that, right? Com can classically, we cannot do that. We have absolutely no idea of how to do that. If we make a, a quantum machine, yeah, a quantum computer, yeah, how long would it take? 26 hours from 100 years and no energy that we, that we have to a bit more than a day. So simply, we are not there yet, right? I want to emphasize that we are not there. But we do hope that at some point, maybe, yeah, this is still like a, a, a crazy example, I know that, yeah, yeah, and given that quantum, uh, no, the crypto is going post, looking post-quantum and things like that, but this simply shows that the compute power potentially in, in the quantum field is so big, is so, so huge, yeah, that we have to look at, into it. it. Not doing it would be, would be a crime to humanity, not to a crime to Intel or IBM, a crime to humanity not to do that, yeah, and why? And now I'm saying crazy things, uh, Ariel, and otherwise you shut, you, you shut me up, right? But the Earth will disappear, will disappear at some point, yeah? The sun will stop shining, maybe it will become a, one big uh, black, black hole, yeah? And will simply absorb all of the planets in, in this, this, uh, this, 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 uh, this, this uh, uh, universe. So we do know that a guy like Elon Musk Yes, you may know him, may, you may not know him, the guy from the Teslas, but also from SpaceX. He has that in mind. He says, we need, we need to develop our space technology in a way that at some point, and maybe in 100,000 or 500,000 years, because I don't know what the predictions are, yeah, we will have to leave this Earth and move maybe first to Mars and there somewhere else. You know? That's why he's doing it. And I think this is also why we need a quantum computer to make all of the necessary calculations to make such a, such a, such a trip possible and not to lose too many people on Earth. Okay, but that's like a, a, a little side remark, yeah? Okay. Uh, is the, the quantum parallelism uh, for free eh, that, I, that I already said a couple of times? I said, no. Carmina only highlighted it. She did not have the time, yeah? Uh, uh, we... we the, the qubits are very erroneous. Yeah? 
it would be great if a, if a qubit could behave like, like a classical bit, yeah? Sure, uh, we, we do know in classical machines that we have a lot of error correction mechanisms, yeah? And a very classical one is that uh, I'm not gonna compute one bit, no, I'm gonna maybe compute it on three bits at the same time, or five bits, or whatever it is. And then I get the result, and I do a majority voting, and said, okay, yeah, one, one is clearly erroneous, but the others give me exactly the same result, so that's, that's a good result. That's how classical computing works. Yeah? Majority voting, so it's a very democratic uh, way. Yeah? Can we do that in, in, the, in the quantum world? No, we cannot. I say, well, you just explained classic. No, we cannot. Why? Because you assume that I can have one bit, I'm going to make three copies or five copies, and then I will do everything on those bits, and then I will compare the states, yeah, and then do majority voting, and that gives me the result. Well. You cannot do that because there are several things that you cannot do uh, uh, quantumly. That is like copying things. I cannot say, this is, the, this is a qubit, and now I'm going to copy, copy it two, three times, and I will have the same mechanism, yeah? and then result, uh, I will compare the, 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 the results, yeah? and then if it's all the same, it's fine, and whatever, eh, kind of a majority voting. I cannot do that. Yeah? So that is something that, uh, that, that, that we cannot do. This is just a calculation by, by Rodney Van Meter. Yeah? Um, he's, uh, I think he's, he's American, yeah? but works uh, mostly in, in Japan. Yeah? And he gave that example in communication of the ACM, which is one of the, 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 the journals yeah? that, we, that we tend to read. Yeah? Uh, in which he made the calculation for this, uh, for this source algorithm, yeah? the source factorization. And you, you end up with a number, 5 billion qubits. And most of these qubits are used for quantum error correction. So it's not for any kind of meaningful computation, it's for quantum error correction. And there are other estimates that whatever, whatever uh, happens on a quantum machine, 90% of what happens has to do with quantum error correction. Uh, that, that was a very big disappointment when I, when I, when I realized that. I said, like, okay, yeah? So that means that a lot of what we have to do has to do with quantum error correction, yeah? And has to do with dealing with the limitations of, of, your, quantum, of your quantum device, yeah? And I will uh, may, may most likely not, not talk about it anymore. But yes, there is also something like Di Vincenzo criteria, yeah, I'm still answering questions uh, of, of yesterday because I, 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 okay, yeah, I was taking notes, said, okay, I need to produce at least one slide. Yeah, there's Di Vincenzo. Di Vincenzo is an American, yeah, but uh, actually he lives already in Germany for, for a long time uh, in, in Aachen, and he's married to a Dutch lady, Barbara Terrell, who now in the meantime has become a professor in, in Qtech, so blah, 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 it's a small world. But David, David, he formulated already years ago yeah, his criteria of what is now actually a quantum computer. Yeah? And these are simply the seven ones. And I, I kind of agree also, again, with Alexander yesterday, yeah, but the really key challenge yeah, is, is the number of qubits. It's all true, you know, because if this, if this is true, yeah, scalable, yeah, what, what does that mean? Yeah, it's just, just a word. Yeah? So in principle, we already have a quantum computer. We already have one. Yeah? But is it solving anything meaningful? No, because we need like so many more qubits, yeah? and that's where, okay, we, 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 do not, we, do not go, we do not go that fast. So again, Di Vincenzo is, uh, is, um, is, is a good, is a good uh, 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 guy to read, yeah? and, and find it, you, you, you find these things on, on, on internet also. Yeah? So the quantum error correction, I already kind of uh, uh, hinted on, on that. Yeah? So I will, I will most likely go uh, uh, relatively fast over these things. And I'm simply gonna, gonna illustrate the, the, the mechanism again that I said. Yeah? We're gonna be using data qubits. Those are the ones that store the real information about the quantum algorithm that we're trying to execute. Yeah? And we know that we cannot simply copy those data qubits. No, you cannot. The no cloning theorem is one of those yeah, uh, fundamental theorems uh, that, that, that we know in quantum mechanics. So you need to have helper qubits. Yeah? Helper qubits named ancilla qubits. Yeah? Uh, to be honest, I really don't know. Maybe in physics, that ancilla has a particular meaning, but, but I, I don't know where that name comes from. Yeah? But these are helper qubits. Yeah? And you want then these ancillas, these helper qubits, to talk, to interact with the, with the data qubits. Because the good thing is that qubits, they can talk to each other, and that does not in any particular way destroy information. It is only when the qubits talk to us through the measurement that they say, oh, 
you give, I give you one, one, one of my, my states. Not the entire state, I give you one of those states. We don't know why. Yeah, I already hinted about that. Vajirani give, can give you maybe some more background about why we don't know. Yeah. So, but this is uh, so I have entanglement. Yeah. So I have three qubits. Yeah. That that we know that's a Hadamard and the C knot. Yeah. That that's how we entangle uh, 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 qubits. Yeah. And then I, I I create a number of ancilla qubits. So I have three and I have so n and n minus one ancilla qubits. So it's kind of 50-50. Yeah. yeah that, that's how you have, must 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 uh, interpret that, yeah? And those ancillas, they will now interact with, uh, with my, my data qubits. And interact simply means like, uh, it's a parity check measurement, yeah? Is it like, are you a zero or a one or whatever it is? Eh? That, 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 that's, what, uh, that's what it is, yeah? We call that the c knot dance. That's what actually Leo Di Carlo calls it. It's a c knot dance because these are yeah, c knots uh, between the, the ancilla and the data qubits, yeah? And then, uh, then you measure out the, the ancilla qubits yeah, you measure them, so that basically gives you the eigenvalues of, uh, of, your, of your ancilla qubits. So that's either a plus or a minus one. Yeah? Remember the amplitudes, I, I, maybe I did not, are complex numbers, but when you measure them, you only get the real number. It's a plus or a minus. Yeah? And so it, then you get a huge graph yeah, of pluses and minuses, and, and that is what you have to interpret and say, okay, this combination of pluses and minuses is, is, is wrong, and that's how you do, uh, you, you try to detect what the quantum error uh, has occurred. Yeah? Now, these are things, uh, Carmina, yeah, uh, if, I, if I repeat Carmina her name too many times, don't, don't, don't uh, yeah, because we work very intensively on, on these things, but because she, she mentioned also yesterday that uh, normally, if you have a big graph, and, and now I'm, let's say a couple of thousands of, of ancilla qubits, so a couple of thousands of, of logical qubits, uh, of, of, uh, of data qubits, yeah, then how am I going to process such a big, big, uh, big uh, uh, um, uh, graph in, in what fractions of a second, in, in really a very little time, time uh, window? Because we have decoherence, right? So the, the qubit is yeah, in a perfect state, but then it starts decohering, it starts losing its state. So it will always end up in, let's say, in the ground state, yeah, in the zero state. Yeah. And so that is the time uh, before, before you go into a state, they say, now, now, now it's a random, random uh, uh, state of my qubit. That's, that's the time that I have to do all of that, uh, that, that computation. So that means that uh, there are algorithms yeah, there's one famous one, Blossom algorithm, yeah, that, that helps you to, to interpret, to process all of those things. But the problem with Blossom is that, yes, it does that in a correct way, but it does not scale. As we add a number, as we add uh, uh, um, ancillas, yeah, then the compute power goes through the roof. So this is clearly not a scalable implementation. So that is why, repeating again what Carmina said, we worked on neural networks. Yeah, neural networks, yeah, sure, everybody has been doing blah, 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 yeah. Training takes a lot of time, yeah. But once you have, let's say, a trained neural network, you can give it also a, a, a graph of your, your measurements here, yeah, the measured ancillas, and it should in constant time, and that's actually what we have shown so far for relatively small data sets, it goes in constant time, it computes the result. Bam, and I have it. Yeah, and that is a, that is a key. That's a key part of, of our of our architecture, and that's what we do in, in quantum error correction. Yeah. Yeah, I still have yeah yeah, yeah I still have 20 minutes, right? So um, um, or not? Yeah, I do, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, but so the, what what are what are the different challenges uh, in, in in quantum computing? Well, one of them is. Get, get the quantum technology there, yeah? There are five candidates, NV centers, yeah? That's what we, so uh, out of those five, we, we, we do four of them in QTech. That's already quite, quite unique, yeah? Other than the fact that in, in QTech, we have the engineering and the physics combined. That is really, and that is kind of a big hint. I, I already, we, we talked about it yesterday. That's maybe a hint for your university, yeah, or even your country to create one research center in which you bring those communities together. And then together, European-wise, we, we collaborate and we, we start blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that, that's, that's, I think, 
not to be forgotten. Yeah? Anyway, we have NV centers for quantum internet we use that mostly, yeah? where you have impurities in those diamonds, and those impurities, they become qubits. Yeah? You have trapped ions. Austria is very, very strong in trapped ions. Yeah? Uh, quantum dots and superconducting is what we have also in Delft. So these are semiconducting, the, the, the quantum dots, and, uh, and the superconducting. Uh, that, that's what we do with, uh, with Intel. And then also Majoranus, that's what uh, Leo Kauenhove, the, the, actually the creator of QTech, started working on. And the Majorana is like a, a, an Italian physician who predicted a particular kind of particle, yeah, that it should be there, and nobody has ever observed it until Kauenhove, maybe six, seven, eight years ago, yeah, that he experimentally said, like, he has a spike in his head. Oh, what is this? What is this? Turns out to be a Majorana. I have not met actually... Ten, ten physicists that say, yeah, that's a Majorana. They all doubt it, but that's fine. That's the way that physics maybe go, right? But uh, anyway, um, so that, those, are, those are the five. So we do everything except ion, ion traps. Um, and we don't know who's going to win. The fact that we are working with Intel on CMI and, and superconducting, yeah, <laughs> I already explained that these are the best people to actually make these things. And they're learning a lot. They're learning a lot also in the collaboration with us. And that's maybe why we will arrive at some point with qubits, well, as we say, without a personality. Yeah? Because that's what we have. Every qubit behaves in its own particular way. That's why every qubit has a particular personality. Yeah? You, 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 you take this microwave and it goes like this. And the next time it goes like that, you know? You say, oh, OK, then you have to change whatever it is. Yeah? So those are, those are challenges that, that, uh, that the physicists have to, have to overcome. Um, classical control electronics. So we, we do know that all of these quantum phenomena, like superposition, entanglement, you need very cold temperatures. Very cold. Yeah? Yeah? Uh, well, for most of them, at least. Yeah? So for super and sema, you need, you need to be at minus 273 point something degrees. That's absolute zero, eh? minus two, then a couple of uh, yeah, decimals, then, then, then nothing moves anymore. So you need, you need to really to freeze everything down. That, that's also called decoupling from, from the environment. Yeah? So that basically you only control the behavior of, let's say, this electron and the spin of the electron. That, 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 that's what it is. So in order to do that, yeah, you need to have a lot of control logic close to the, to the qubits at minus 273 degrees. And that is also a research path that we have, is how the CMOS behave under those cryo conditions. So that's the cryo CMOS kind of part. And it's uh, Fabio Sebastiano, he's a young guy, yeah, who is, who is taking the lead of these things. Yeah? And why, why am I uh, naming these people? Because like Armina, we have uh, uh, Masoud, we have uh, Fabio, we had Nader, yeah? but we have Imran. Yeah? We're making a young generation of quantum scientists, a young generation. People who, 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 are, who are enthusiastic about it yeah? and, and still don't have all the kinds of the a priori, yeah, yeah, this is how it works. No, they say, we don't know, and they discover everything. And it's such a, such a delight for me as an old guy, yeah, a, a bit older, yeah, I'm not that old, but still, I'm, I'm, I'm much older, to work with young people and are so motivated and so enthusiastic, you know. Yeah, I, I, if she could have continued for four more hours, she would have done it yesterday, right? But uh, yeah, luckily that was a kind of, uh, yeah. So this is, this is the, 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 the thing. Where, where we work on, yeah, where we work on is actually, remember that, uh, that uh, in the Hennessy and Patterson talk, they said, yeah, you start to look at the, the application domain, the compiler, yeah, and then the microarchitecture, the chip design, pop, 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 yeah, and that, that's how you make accelerators. I said, yeah, I've been doing that all my life for, for FPGAs, and now I do that also for, for computers. But if you look at the, compute, the quantum computing world, this is what it is, yeah? You say, like, you have people doing quantum algorithms, Shore, Grover, all these things, yeah? the quantum Fourier transform, all brilliant kind of things. Yeah? And then you have the quantum physicists. And they don't really talk to each other. They belong to the same community, but they speak completely different languages. And I said, like, OK. And then we started, we started working there. And that's, that's an open invitation again to all of the computer engineers. That's what I meant, like, create a center in which you bring those two, but make sure you're also there, because we are the ones that actually make the connection between the two. And this figure, yeah, uh, 
we have uglier ones that we actually show to Intel. Yeah, this is like a nicely made afterwards. This is what we call the full stack, the full quantum system stack. And this is what we've been doing from day one, without knowing whether that's the right way to go. Yeah, but if Hennessy and Patterson, and they're very mature and, and super bright guys, yeah, if they say this is how you should make an accelerator, well, they didn't talk about quantum. Yeah, that's what we do. Yeah. So that's, that's actually, we, we are, I will tell you something about quantum algorithms at the end of the day by the time that you're like, yeah, 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 whatever. Yeah, I will still tell you something about that. Yeah, but we, we've developed our own language, OpenQL, that you know, that uh, Carmina said. Yeah, and we also are in the process of making our, our common QASM, the quantum assembly language, because IBM is doing things, Google is doing things, yeah, I have Fred Chong from Chicago doing things, blah, 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 blah. And they all invent their own quantum, uh, quantum assembly language. So I can never reuse whatever it is that they do. I said, no, let's standardize that, you know? Yeah, we, so we try to, we're in the process of making a common QASM anyway. Yeah, we have, as I said, an instruction set architecture because it's an accelerator, so it needs to be able to execute something, yeah, that you're capable of, of, of providing in your language. There's a microarchitecture, then there's the cryo CMOS, and then ultimately is the quantum chip. If you look at QTech, yeah, the, 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 the research lab at, at university, 90% of the people work on the physics. Yeah? And we're the only, uh, I don't know how to call us, yeah, but we're the only idiots maybe to work on the, on the computer engineers, so basically on the entire thing. And we, wanna, we really want to wanna be working on, on, on it. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to yeah, skip now a couple of the slides, yeah, because otherwise I get uh, Louis uh, saying, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. But um, in red is what we've actually, oh, uh, what, what we've been working on, open QL, QL, uh, that, that's, uh, that's, what we, that's what we do, yeah. This is a different, a different uh, uh, yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to skip yeah, a couple of things. Open QL, I should have, uh, I should have said something about that, um, yeah. I'm going to, okay, I'm, I'll, 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 I'll stop here, yeah, uh, because that, that, that really highlights one of those key problems, and that's, uh, that's Carmina's responsibility, yeah, is, is about routing your qubit states. So let's assume I have a little, little uh, quantum circuit here, and I have to map my seven qubits on, on, uh, on let's say, my two-dimensional map, yeah? And so uh, let's assume, okay, a relatively simple one, Q0, Q1, yeah, uh, two, three, four, five, six, yeah, bit of, you see, maybe it's already kind of thought about, yeah, and then let's try to execute it. So I have here my, my first uh, uh, C naught gate that is, uh, has to be done uh, between three and four. So three and four, they are nearest neighbors, yeah, remember that that's kind of a constraint that we have, that if you want, if you want to apply a quantum gate on two qubits, a two qubit gate, they need to be close to each other. We don't know yet how to make that in a, in a, in a distant space. Yeah? We're not there. Classically, we, we know how to do that, but, but uh, quantumly, we don't. So, okay, so, they have to, so that can be executed. Then this one, C naught between 3 and 5. 3 and 5, so that's also possible. And then I have, oh, wait, then I have this one between 2 and 4. So 2 and 4, they're not nearest neighbor. So that means they have to swap. Yeah, they have to be the, the, the states have to have to be shifted. So you're going to shift them, and, and so now Q2 and Q4 are, uh, are are close to each other. So you can apply also the gate. That is a very big problem, you know, in, in quantum computing, because I have a big a big uh, a big uh, uh, circuit. Yeah, no, a big a big chip. Yeah, with a lot of qubits, and maybe I have a, a very a, a very big quantum circuit with millions of steps. Yeah, on all of those qubits, and oof, yeah, and then you have to make sure that the, the, the qubits are are placed somewhere in a, in an efficient way in the start, but then also always compute what the route is that you have to that you have to uh, you have to find. Yeah, I'm gonna. Oh, okay. I'm gonna, uh, uh, and then I will show one video, and then 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 maybe tonight I will. Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's it's one hour break afterwards. No. So if I take five more minutes of the break. It's just, ah, oh, it's only half an hour, so okay, okay, okay. Uh, so this is, this is uh, again, one, one picture of our big picture, yeah? So uh, in our Intel collaboration, 
I already mentioned that we work with Leo Di Carlo and Lieve van der Seipe, yeah, Leo on superconducting and Lieve on semiconducting, and we make the microarts of a full stack for each of them. Yeah? Um, and so that's for the experimental part. But Intel also says, look ahead, you know, look ahead, let's say, in five to ten years, where we, where we think we will be in terms of number of qubits and what the microarchitecture hub to hub would be, yeah? And so that's also what we're, what we're looking at. And that's why we have a, a, a full design, yeah, of what we understand currently based on the literature, what should be the components, what are the components of this quantum architecture? Yeah. And again, it is an accelerator technology. You see here the classical CPU, yeah? and then this is where the quantum physicists are, and, and everything in, in between, that, that's what we're currently doing. So that's why it, it is a bit bigger, because we have to understand what it is that we're doing, right? So you see here, maybe you don't really can, can read it, yeah? but you do see things that classically we like an instruction cache. Yeah, sure, we need that, you know? Yeah, because I have quantum instructions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So OpenQL and QASM, what goes into the, the quantum accelerator is QASM. Is this quantum assembly CQASM, I have to say, yeah? So whatever comes in here, yeah, this is the, the QASM part. And then you see here, yeah, a co uh, something like a microcode unit. And I say, yeah, well, here at Hennessy and Patterson's book, that's clear, because they talk about microcode, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's what it is. I, we've been doing that also for FPGAs. And why, why have we introduced that? Because we, we, one, two, two reasons. One, the quantum technology is not there yet where we want it to be. Yeah? So we don't really know what, what the execution is yeah, at some point. And we don't even know what, what technology is going to win. Because remember, there are five. We work on four. So actually, we're working now on two. And we, we try to go maybe even to, to NV centers in Majorans at some point if, if uh, Intel allows us, right? So, but that, that's why, why we have the QASM, why is it common QASM? Because in principle, you should not, you should not worry too much uh, at that level whether you're going to a Majorana or to, an, to a superconducting, yeah? It's only once you go, uh, let's say, from this stage on, yeah, that you have to really understand what the, what the micro instructions are that you're going to be executing. And that's where the micro code comes in. So I have a quantum assembly uh, instruction that will be translated into micro instructions, the micro code. That's why it's a little piece of program. Yeah? And that will be sent to these queues here. Yeah? And then those queues are connected to, to let's say, cryo components here. Yeah? Uh, which I have, it basically says like, yeah, microwave 5 on qubit 2. Yeah, let's assume that. Yeah? So that's the instruction that goes in there. And that will then be mapped on, indeed, a, a control-triggered yeah, uh, 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 gate. Yeah? And that means that there's somewhere a micro, microwave unit. Uh, uh, these are F FPGAs, right? So there's somewhere in the, on the FPGA, there's a microwave. And that microwave will then be sent yeah, or executed on that particular qubit. That's, that's how, that's how uh, we, we do it. Yeah? Um, I'm going to... Uh, this is the experimental microarchitecture, whatever we have been developing for LEO uh, and now also for Leven this year. Uh, and and uh, I will now go, yeah, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, this is the, the setup. Yeah, this is the, this is the fridge. It's a, it's a barrel. And inside this barrel is this, yeah, with different layers. And at the lowest layer, that's where you put your quantum chip. And that's where you, you get also the coldest thing. So these are helium, helium fridges. So it's liquid helium or whatever technology is. Yeah? So that's how you cool everything down to the temperatures that you want it and that you can be sure that you have the right uh, quantum behavior. Yeah? Uh, and then you see here all the cables uh, going uh, that control everything inside, inside this, this barrel. And so that's, that's, uh, that's uh, uh, a floor below. There's a hole in the floor, yeah, and then it comes here into, into our system rack, yeah, which is the floor above. That's where the, the technical team is, yeah. And I'm simply, and this is this is what we do. You say, well, bragger, yeah, you know, is that the only thing you do? The tiniest box in the entire thing. This is the brain of everything. There's not a single signal that will be sent to any kind of chip if we, if our microarchitecture has not computed that it should be done. 
Yeah? So this is, this is simply, I, I can say that, uh, that um, uh, uh, Leo Di Carlo, so from day one in the, with the Intel collaboration, the first year, I said to Leo, I said, Leo, let's do a live demonstration of whatever it is that we developed. And Leo said, like, no, no insult to, to physicists, but I felt insulted. He said, no, 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 no. That's too much work. It will never work. Yeah, and what are we going to win with that, you know? I said, okay, you don't want to be involved? We'll do it. Nader, yeah, and Shine, yeah, I will show you the pictures at the end, yeah. They did most of the work, you know. And I think it was like two hours before one of the vice presidents of Intel, Mike Mayberry, yeah, he comes every year, he comes to Delft, say, talk to me now, you know, what, what are you doing with, with our money and, and with our collaboration, yeah. And we, we gave them, and I will show a little video at, at uh, yeah, in, in, in a second, yeah. So that is that is what uh, what uh, yeah this is close up the FPGAs yeah I will I will go uh, what it is yeah okay this is the this is the video yeah um, voila now I let it uh, I let it run it's a crappy interface I have to admit now we have a, a much smoother one but I don't have we did one also six months ago but we we simply forgot to make a video out of it so and then the entire setup goes away and then blah 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 it's not possible anymore so but what is it that, that we do here is randomized benchmarking yeah what the, because that's a typical thing that physicists need to do yeah they need to understand how the the, the qubits are behaving and how they react to 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 any kind of quantum gate so what it is that we said, okay, uh, Leo, your team programming OpenQL, then we generate the QASM, yeah, that's what you see here, yeah, uh, we generate the QASM, and then that QASM is translated into this microcode. That was a bit of a crappy microcode because of our very first year of collaboration, so we really had to throw away a lot of things that Leo did, yeah. And so what, are we, what is randomized benchmarking is that I, I do, uh, I, it's a single qubit thing, right? One qubit only, a physical qubit. Yeah? So we don't, we don't have thousands of qubits. Yeah? We have one, yeah? two and a half years ago, right? But so what do we do is I have two, qubit, uh, two, two gates and I do it on the qubit and then I reverse those two qubits. Yeah? It's reversible computing. And then I measure what the, what the error is of my, of my qubit. And then I do four, then eight. 1632, and you keep on increasing up to several thousands of qubits that you do in one shot, and then you reverse, and then you measure out. And then what, what we plot here is actually the errors that you see. So uh, this is the 50% the 50, the, the 50 chance, so that's, that's random behavior, yeah? Uh, so you do see as the number of qubits, the, the quantum gates, they keep on increasing, then my error also increases, yeah? And what do you see here? In yellow, if you see the yellow, yeah, that's where the gates are. Yeah, that's that's how that's how that that's the sequence that keeps on growing. Yeah, and uh, and the red one is actually the measurement, and the blue is then the actual measurement. Yeah, that that's so that's something we showed live, you know, for for the Intel team, for our team, and that was uh, Carmina. You can say that that was a huge success, and Leon also is there. Yeah, that was a huge success. You know, people was like, wow. Yeah, it was the first time that they yeah. We're not used to anything, maybe at QTech, yeah, that's also possible. Yeah, but that was, that was really a, a big thing. And what is, what is nice now is that, that actually this idea of the full stack, yes, Hennessy and Patterson keep on saying that, but I say that too, you know, yeah, it's really the way that we have to start working on quantum, on quantum uh, technology. And this is something that, you know, that in Europe there's now a quantum flagship. We have one on Brain, we have one on Graphene. And I don't know uh, what else there is, but the, the flagship is the quantum flagship is there, and uh, and we saw already that many of the the submitted projects, like the semiconductor from Grenoble from CEA or the the ion traps from Austria, they all start saying the full stack implementation, and so that is already our contribution that we made to the community. Let's say, okay, but then do the do, do the entire thing, and that that's very important. Uh, I'm simply going to show, show, show one, one eh? uh, because again, we, 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 we had um, uh, Mike Mayberry here. So, and you see also here, there's a button, compiler optimization. Yeah, it, it's a bit blurry, I know. Yeah. So it was uh, no optimization, because if I do a thousand gates and then I do the exact opposite, any reasonable compiler said, guy, think about it. I'm going to cancel all of the gates, you know? Yeah. That, that, that's, so we said, We'll show you that there's a real compiler. So we said at some point, now optimize this thing. 
And then everything like disappears, you know, really disappears. All these gates, they disappear. So that was just for us to prove that whatever it is that we do actually is real and is not really like a, a prefabricated kind of thing. So that is what, uh, basically what, uh, what, what we saw there. So um, I think now I'll, I'll, uh, I'll stop, yeah, and uh, thank you very much for your thank attention. Thank you very much. have little time, but I think we can allow for one or two questions. Um, you mentioned the fact that uh, we don't have a way to um, apply gates to, to qubits that are far apart, like spatially. Uh, do you have, or are people working on like topological approach on different surfaces or different uh, yeah, form of putting qubits in space so that they are closer together or they're, it's yeah. easier to map uh, gates on top of them. Yeah, uh, well, uh, you mentioned an important word, topology, right? Um, so uh, th there, there are two answers. Uh, one is that, uh, again, Carmina mentioned that already, quantum gates are frequencies, basically, that you apply on, 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 on these electrons. Yeah, and uh, uh, they need to, let's say, you, you need to bring them close together, but they should not cross. They should be close together, and then you separate them again. And that's how you do, let's say, some kind of quantum gate on, 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 on a set of electrons yeah, from, from multiple qubits. So the, 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 the fact that you need this proximity of the frequencies that really needs that you have a lot of control electronics close by to each other to, to, imp, to, imp, to, to have, let's say, an interaction yeah, and to manipulate those frequencies. So that is something that they, that they, that they don't know how to do that on a, on a big distance because you need really connectivity between those things, really cables through which the signals can be, can be sent and must be close enough so that there is some kind of interaction between those frequencies. So that is, that is, that is a key problem. So you, you use the word topology. Yeah? We looked at that in two ways. So you have the, the topological quantum computing, which is based on the Majoranas. Yeah? We still... Uh, and, and we, that means Leo Kauenhofer, but actually no one in the world has already produced a qubit yeah, uh, based on Majorana uh, phenomena. Yeah? But the predictions are, the theoretical understanding is that they're topologically very, very robust and that there should not be a close proximity between, between qubits yeah, to have that kind of interaction. Trust me, nobody has demonstrated anything, so we don't know. Yeah? We did look also ourselves at is there some kind of topolo topology yeah, when, when, and that, that's something that Carmina and, and, and her team already looked at. Yeah, if, if I have a, a quantum circuit, let's first uh, uh, see what, what qubits are most heavily interacting with other qubits. So we should put them already together on, on, on the, the two-dimensional chip. Yeah? So that is kind of a topological choice that you make. But then we started doing uh, runs with, with a large number of gates. And then you see that the effect of this topological uh, nearest neighbor yeah, immediately evaporates after X gates. And then you, you, yeah, you have to move them a, a, around anyway. So that unless the physicist, and that is clearly, yeah, the multiple disciplines are, are working together on these things. If the physicists do not solve the erroneous, the coherence problems and the routing problems yeah, in qubits, I'm not sure that in 10 years we'll, we'll be much further down, down the road. But we don't know how brilliant yeah, one of those guys will be. He said, I solved it, yeah? and then wow, we, we, then, we do would see, then we would see maybe a Morse, Morse curve yeah, in, in number of qubits uh, also doubling every 18 months. Yeah? So, Again, it's a long answer to basically say, yeah, we don't know, yeah, but we do hope that it will, that it will improve. And many of the problems we can try to solve, yeah, like the topological proximity of, of highly interacting qubits. But if, if the coherence yeah, is not fundamentally solved yeah, by the physicist, then, 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 then the scalability will, will be severely hampered. fermions and topological insulators. It started out as a conceptual object, something that theoreticians predicted. It's not fully characterized experimentally. We're just giving the first step. So it's, it's still something which we hope will provide something useful. No guarantees. Okay. Um, the other thing that has to do with the decoherence, this has to do with the fact that everything in the universe interacts with everything. 
So you cannot so, somehow take something out of the universe and work with it completely isolated. So it, it's endemic. You have to deal with it. And that's where these challenges of combining science and technology come from, too. Yeah. Okay, that's just a small comment. Yeah. So, okay. one last uh, question. Yeah, I would like to refer to, the, to your transparency on qubit technology. Right, okay, a quantum computer processes information through unitary operations. But actually it's easy to write unitary operation on the paper, but actually you have to introduce potential, switch it on, interrupt your physical system and switch it off. So which of the technologies you mentioned is the most reliable if you like to use, well, uh, let's say unitary operations. Yeah. Uh, it's a good question, and again, I have to, I'm afraid that, that the Majoranas, again, theoretically on paper, seem to have very good properties. Yeah? Uh, but uh, there is, there, ion traps were 10, 15 years ago were very popular. Everything had to be ion traps, and that's only that hype is, is, is really diminished, and now it's in super and semiconducting. So, do we see now much, much better behavior? No, everybody seems to be uh, confronted by the same uh, problems, yeah, of the coherence and, and, and the scaling problems. Um, we, we don't know yet, actually, which, which of those uh, quantum technologies will be, will be the best. And maybe, like, like happened so many times in technology, that, a not, that not the best technology may dominate the market. Yeah, so that we, we, we really don't know about those things. Uh, so, so uh, yeah, I, I'm afraid I have no answer for that. Yeah. Perhaps we can continue some of these discussions uh, over some coffee. Just to tell you that we should be back here at 11 sharp for the next talk. Also, uh, remind people that we have a hackathon going on. So people should put their names on the whiteboard or at least tell tell us, put this something there, telling us which topic do you want to work in. Okay, so it might be easier to gather people around the same topics. So enjoy your coffee and thank the speakers. <laughs>